Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. As I look and see how many data centers that we are putting across the valley, quite frankly, across the country, it's become apparent to a lot of people now, we don't have enough power and we're not going to have enough water. Across the country, municipalities are saying, I can't take you. I know you want to put in a big data center, but I don't have the juice for you. Arizona, where we're already trying to conserve water, is also saying, I don't think so. And some of the data centers that are being proposed are being rejected with the exception of the city of Mesa. Now, a large data center can use as much power, just one data center, as a small community. It's a lot of power. They also use about 300,000 gallons of water per day. That's a lot of water we don't have here, folks. So what's being done? Well, across the country, as I look at it, North America data center inventory grew by 24.4% year over year in the first quarter of this year. And it said it led the world's largest data center market led with 391 megawatts of new supply. That market also has the largest near year over year net absorption at 407.4 megawatts, the lowest vacancy rate of 0.9 in Q1. Not quite sure what all of that means, but I thought I'd read it for you anyway. What's needed to successfully power data centers combined with the proliferation of the sector has resulted in a number of communities across America fiercely exposed, opposing these projects as they're proposed. In other words, I don't want it. I want what they do. Every household now has an average of between 10 and 14 connected devices. Whether it's your iPhone, your iPad, your computer, all of those need data. And those companies that are providing you the information, they collect that data. And they use that data for a lot of different things. Grocery stores use your data. When you take your little card and you scan it and you go into Safeway or Fry's, they use your data to determine your buying patterns and determine everybody's buying patterns as a group so that they can sharpen their advertising. That takes data. Facebook is built, has built uh, a huge data center out in East Mesa. And so has, uh, um, what do I want to say, Amazon, putting them in all over the place. Here's a picture of a data center right here developed by a data center developer tracked proposed a mega campus with nearly 30 buildings in West Metro Phoenix. But those plans were withdrawn in April. That's probably a good thing. But the other thing is, okay, well, what about the jobs? As a rule, they don't produce as many full-time jobs as you think when you look at it compared to the size of the building, the size of the warehouses. You put in a distribution warehouse, you're employing a lot of people. You put in a data center, it doesn't take that many people to run it comparatively to how much space is being used. So how much revenue they generate? I don't know. I haven't been able to find that. Maybe some of you know and you can share that with me. But I think it's time when we look at these data centers to also take a look at electric vehicles. Look at California last summer. Now, I'm not trying to be anti-EV. I'm just saying we got to face the facts, folks, and we don't have enough power. SRP's already said, well, we better start doing something if we expect to be viable in the next five to ten years, if electric vehicles continue to grow at the rate that they are. California last year, when they were having a heat crisis, told people that owned electric vehicles, um, please don't plug your cars in. We need the power. We don't have the capacity. How convenient. We could be facing that here. Texas is facing that right now. There are some states that have really clamped down on it and said that uh, we can't handle it when it comes to data centers. In Atlanta, some city council members are seeking to ban data centers from being built within the city's belt line overlay district within a half a mile of transit, transit stations. It's a tough line to walk. The tax revenue the facilities provide by many municipal leaders as an economic development win, that benefit may be especially important in the aftermath of a pandemic. That completely changed the role of the office, cratering the value and subsequent revenue from many of those commercial properties. What they're saying there is they don't mind these commercial properties buildings that are now sitting empty being converted to data centers. I get that. 
But now that building that was commercial property is using more power and more water than it ever did as an office complex. I'd like to see the problem solved somehow. I'd like to see us increase our production of power. Uh, I'm pro-growth, but I think we need to be smart about it. And I think we're letting the cart get ahead of the horse on this one. And we have some uh, watch outs out there and some dangers if we're not not careful. We've had two good years of water here in Arizona. Uh, Lake Powell is almost back to where it was. Our reservoirs are above capacity. And so we're sitting here thinking, okay, things are looking good. But the cities that are being smart are taking a hard look at it. And here we are, inventory of the top data markets in the United States measured in megawatts. Phoenix is one, two, three, four, number five, 360. I don't know what that 360 means, but if you look at us in relationship to the amount of power that we're using, even versus Southern California or Seattle or Denver, we're way above the amount of power usage that they have. And I have not yet found a chart on how much water that we're using with regards to data centers. So that's something to watch. Keep your eye on the news. Let's just keep an eye on it and see what goes on. And, uh, you know, rally your legislators and ask them the questions. What are we doing to generate more power here? Because the more people that move here, the more power we need. And uh, where are we going to get it? I don't know. But you have any questions on real estate in Arizona, be sure and shoot me an email at rick, rickhelps.com. Take care.